Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So I'm just going to play you the recording of Rob Wood and Rob Wood is the prosecutor on the Vallow case and he's talking to Summer Cox, which is Lori's sister. So I'm going to play you that recording that they played in court. Here it is. They're the ones kind of running down the kids' case because they were last seen in Rexburg. Yeah, um, were last living in Rexburg. Right. Tyler was last seen in Yellowstone, but... um. Uh, and so we were the ones that like, knew everything about the case, um, and so they assigned us on that. Um, I'm just going to tell you right now, we we are going to be filing conspiracy to commit murder charges against both Chad and Lori. Good. Um, and we're not <coughs> shy about that. I've told their attorneys. Okay. His attorney keeps pretending like I've never said that. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, but we are. We have to. Yeah. We have to. Um, but I kind of want to give you like a little bit of background of, of where we are and uh, kind of like our kind of theory of how this ended up where it was. We know that this is not the same Lori everyone else knew. Um, uh, what's so strange to me is um, everyone we talked to, everyone we talked to who knew Lori before this, right, well, she was primary president she made quilts for these kids she yeah. she made everything yeah. fun mm -hmm. everyone loved her she loved everyone um great mom great mom that's what mm -hmm. everyone says and and you know so the, the one thing i'm going to kind of ask you to consider is maybe, maybe something happened i don't know what i don't know if it's psychological i, I don't know um I, I don't know if we'll ever know uh, but something happened, and, and I think Colby, the way he said it to me, I think is kind of it's like the person who's in that jail cell is not my mom; it's someone else. Yeah. Um, the flip side of that is that um, I shouldn't say the flip side, but uh, I, I want to be clear: I'm not I'm not going to pull any punches on any defendant in this case, right? Like I've got my job to do. And, Absolutely. Um, but we also want the truth and the whole truth and the context of it. And Chad Daybell is, you, did you ever meet Chad? So I met him once at a preparing people. I went to one preparing okay. people thing and um, my mom and husband and I went to support Lori and she wanted to support Mel. So we went and met Chad after he talked for like 90 seconds, maybe mm -hmm. if that. And then he called me when Lori got transferred to the Idaho jail. He texted me and said, Lori wanted to talk to me. And I was like, yeah. And then the second I hung up with her, he called me to ask me about bail mm. for Lori. So I've talked to him maybe three times briefly on the phone, never a long extended conversation. But the first thing he said to me when he called me was that um, he said, Lori hasn't told me very much about the kids. So there's not really much I can tell you about it. Right. Of course you said that. Um, well, welcome to Chad Davo. Um, so what I want to kind I of... Have a, I have my own opinions formed of him. Yes, I bet you do. Yeah. He is, he's highly manipulative. Yeah, I see that. Um, I'm not going to say he's highly intelligent, but you don't have to be highly intelligent to be highly manipulative. Absolutely. He is extremely manipulative, and, uh, um, and, and I want to... Your sister manipulated him in some ways too, but the uh, the context for everything that happened came from Chad. Absolutely. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we we do we have enough evidence to prosecute him, and we are. Uh, I, the case against your sister is stronger, um, but um, I just. I kind of want to give you like just that background. That's kind of the context we see this as. Like this guy came in here, and you know, again, I'm not making excuses for anyone, but kind of blew up this situation. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, he did not care who died, mm -hmm. who got hurt. He did not care at all. Um, and the other thing I tell you is, your sister truly believes that everything she's done has been done in righteousness. I know. And I know. I'm kind of using. LDS speak. Yeah, that's, 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 that's my that's, interpretation also. Yeah. I think she had her percent She believes, believes it. Mm -hmm. um, every once in a while, you'll see kind of a little crack in like a jail phone call. Um, 
but uh, or she'll. Well, uh, you've heard our conversation, so you know that I I get that she's not fully aware of what she's really done. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't think she is. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to say this. I think she knows what she's done. She knew enough to lie to us but, about it. Yeah, but she the context under which it was done was this religious. I mean, just these ideas that are out there. Um, I can say this because I am LDS, like no basis in the LDS faith. I just, you said it in your phone call to her. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where we're at. And uh, we, you know, but again, we're just really grateful for you coming in. And it's going to be hard to talk about these things. Oh, yeah. We know that. Um, yeah. And they're going to be uh, nice. Because <laughs> obviously, you know, you're not even a person of interest. Yeah, in we, we've had you're that conversation. Just, yeah. yeah. And um, but part of what we need to do is understand what, when, when you have a case like this, it's not like just like a meth case. Like, oh, you had meth. No one cares who you are. And yeah, there's no it. drugs, no alcohol. Yeah. It's just but, but this bizarre. case is a, uh, yeah. um, we, need to, we need to understand the context of who these people are. Yeah. And so that, that's a lot of what they're going to be asking you about. Okay. And, uh, I'll do my best. Like I said, I know I mean, it won't be easy. Yeah. I know it's going to be a hard, hard interview. For um, me, but. I was wondering if you would, be willing to tell me if you're able to tell me if there's any progress in what you know about Tylee and her death. Is, is there any progress in her autopsy where you understand better? All I can tell, well. I mean, do you have a cause yet or is it close to one? She is at the FBI's state of the art um, crime lab. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of deceased bodies there that they're they're going through sure. um, and so we're not uh, we don't know really anymore yet okay. um, and we may never know uh, due to, to the um, yeah. the destruction of that body and um, uh, yeah we, we hope we'll find out we, we may not but um, obviously we, we know it's her we, we, there was soft tissue that was still preserved enough to do DNA tests. Um, yeah, I'm thankful you guys found them. Like, yeah. We wouldn't have ever known. Yeah. And I would have never dreamed that she would ever hurt them. So. You know what? And everyone says that. Yeah. That's what everybody says. I, I never would have. Um, so it's, it is, it's a tragic thing. It really is, yeah. And, um, but I, again, I just want you to know how grateful we are. You, you will. I know you know you don't have to talk to us, and so we're just grateful that you're willing to and um, and helping us that way. And I, it's I'm sure kind of difficult knowing like they're asking me for information that's going to help them in a case against your sister. But um, but I I guess the thing I want you to know is our whole goal is just justice for these kids, you yeah. know. And we uh, I mean our hope our hope is it comes to a your sister's actually made some overtures. She might be willing to talk to us. Um, I hope she does. I pray for we, that all the time. We hope she does. Yeah. Um, she actually was talking about with Chad about talking to us before we found the bodies, just a few days before, and he talked her out of it, mm. which is too bad. Uh, it would have been better for her to tell yeah, us. Yeah, sure. Would have been. I mean, it, we were actually <clears throat> just finishing up our warrant on the day that she said that. We were just getting ready to go out there, but it would have been you know that would have been even better and he talked her out of it yeah and then the night before she says to him again like hey what do you think about you know and, and he uses this kind of i call it spiritual abuse spiritual manipulation yeah. you know you we've all seen that guy in the lds religion whose wife has to obey him because he has the priesthood type thing and it's, that's not what he says but it's very it's the same type of thing mm -hmm. you know, well i'm the visionary guy so you know um so uh, anyway, again, I just wanted to meet with you real quick, introduce myself and, and Mackenzie. She's yeah. I want to obviously see you. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. Um, but I don't take any joy in doing anything that's going to harm her. I don't take joy in her spending her life in prison. There's nothing sure. that hurts to think about her being in there. 
there, there's nothing good about a case like this. There's right? nothing good about even it. Even like, even if you win a case, and Garrett's been in court, like there, there's cases, as, you know, as a prosecutor, like you take to trial and you win, and you're like, even at the end, you're like, well, nothing good is this. It's all. It's all bad. Yeah. It's all bad. Um, no. the, the, the one thing, you know, I said this to someone the other day who knows your sister, is uh, our goal is uh, sometimes you get a murder and all you have is that murder and you just have to run out and charge it and, and then kind of put it, put it together. Um, we, are, we are able to put them in jail with a high bell on these lower charges and put together our case. And our goal is to have such a strong case that when she has competent counsel, I don't know if you know this, her attorney's never handled a felony before. Mm -hmm. um, he has never, never done any meaningful criminal work at all. And he doesn't know what he's doing. He's a nice guy. Yeah, Other when he's lying he's... about me, but he, uh, <laughs> but he's, he doesn't know what he's doing. And uh, when, once we file further charges, she will be appointed counsel who will know what they're doing. And our goal is to, uh, put together such a case that they're smart enough to say, uh, it's going to be better to talk. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think we are. Um, and make it easier for everyone. Make it easier, especially you know, for Colby. Like, if there's someone who's lost everything, it's him. So anyway, I, again, I, I mainly just wanted to thank you for coming and being with us. And, mm -hmm. um, Weird to be on the prosecution and defense side at the same time because I love everybody. Well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a system. I did defense work for almost, I mean, I did it for five years. And I, I, mean, I, and I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I like uh, defending. And, uh, well, and, and I gave me that perspective, right? Like, just because someone's committed a crime doesn't mean they're a horrible person. So I, I'm so torn with all of it's such a conflicting feeling to know that this person's been good her whole life and then has made this error in judgment and got accepted into this vortex of this man. Mm -hmm. And I feel for her. I just have so much compassion towards her because I know that's not what she would have ever done on her own. Right. And so she's going to pay the price for this forever. And I hate that for her. So I'm very conflicted. But I was going to ask you on the concealment or not the concealment but on the conspiracy to commit murder what's the weight of that in terms of jail time is that a death penalty it's, thing or it is, is a death penalty case not at all do you are you planning to ask for that for them or do you know we sure hope we don't okay. a lot of that will depend on her okay um and it's uh that's that's not a decision or that's a decision we don't make actually until usually after the case is filed okay and i know we we have a couple months because a lot of times you file it, it's out there on the table, and then oftentimes that's a big motivator for people to get together and talk and try and resolve it. Um, and that's that's what we hope happens. I have, I have no desire to do that. Plus, once you do do that, it, it, it's endless appeals. Um, yeah. uh, I, I don't think the other family wants it at all because it uh, the case just never resolves yeah. really in a way. Just kind of they appeal this and they appeal that and, and it can go on forever. So we're, we're sure hoping not to go down there. No, I'm not saying I won't. If, if we go to trial, I might, but I, we haven't made up our minds on that. Okay. We, but we don't want to, I can tell you that from the bottom of my heart. Knowing her, if she comes out of this state and realizes the weight of it, she may prefer that. Honestly, I, I think about that all the time with her just because of what she's been through. I just, Oh, I'm just kidding. Well, I, I'm, I, I know that you know a lot more about Lori than I do. Um, but we have learned a lot about Lori. And, and there's, um, yeah, I, I mean, there's been some things happen in her life, I think, that have played into this. Oh, definitely. And um, so, but yeah, we, like I said, I, talk about in a one way a little bit <clears throat> sure, but I want you to know that I have no desire to uh yeah I think you see it for what it is yeah it's it's not I don't um, know how you couldn't with interviewing everybody well it's yeah I mean I, I, I'll tell you when I was there in Hawaii when that um uh, the order to produce the children was served um and I uh and I was there when they served the search warrants where the news showed up I was super annoyed by that. I never wanted it. It's just, 
just blows everything up, right? Um, at that moment, when we saw them, I just, your sister can put on a brave face. Oh, yeah. We were like, oh, does this guy know what he's gotten into? Mm -hmm. um, and because she was just very, very stoic, very like, I'm not going to say a word. And he looked like he was about to pee his pants because he's actually a wimpy person. Yeah. Is he wimpy? Yeah. 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 He's great if he has someone else to do something for him, but he himself is, is, is a person. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, they're like, this is all her. Like, how is she hoodwink this guy? But then once we like dug into the, you know, that was the beginning as we're like starting to get facts. Once we got more facts, like, oh, again, I'm, I'm not going to pull punches if I have to go to trial, but mm -hmm. um, these these ideas came from him. Oh, yeah. And uh, and and she had she had some different views on theology than like standard LDS by that point. But he really knew how to manipulate that and turn it into something even more. His influence was there before she met him. Yes. Yeah. We so, he, she was reading his books for... It wasn't just his books. So it was um, like the Julie Rowe podcast. Oh, yes. He gave Julie Rowe a lot of her ideas. And so when she would listen to Julie Rowe, she was getting Chad ideas too mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Julie Rowe. She's mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. I've heard some of her podcasts. Was, when she started talking about herself in third person all the time, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I listen to her podcast as well. And uh, um, interesting stuff. So, Garrett, Garrett doesn't like it when people talk about themselves in the third person. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we'll, we'll let you get going and okay. start on this. I um, think if you guys wanted some wristbands to take back with you, um, these are wristbands I have made up for Tylee and JJ. I'll come in. And that's all right. Take them in, Joel. Give them to everybody. Here. Sorry. I'll tell you Take what. If you want them, we just. Yeah. We did a balloon release. They've, they've got a couple of wristbands for it. Let's see. There's Ron, Ray. You could just take the whole bag with you. It's fine. Just take oh, them. do you have more than this? Oh, I have plenty. Okay. Have you can't, you can't order less than 100, so, you know. You know, I have <laughs> I made up hundreds for. I started oh. off just doing them for Tylee and JJ's friends and teachers. We wear ours all the time, so just keep some close. Thank you. Yeah. Were you good? Sorry. You've That's been, all right. It's okay. You've been it's in it. An emotional <laughs> thing. You know, it's interesting how you can, uh, in Rexburg, those kids weren't there very long. But there are kids. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, anytime there's kids involved, yeah. it's not okay. <laughs> so, thank you. Yes. There's not a one among us that doesn't want to protect the kids. Right. Yeah. For yeah. sure. All right. Well, I'll text the name one more. If you need, I don't know how long it's, I, if, I mean, if we want to really pause down to how few days and days, and we obviously don't have that. Uh, any breaks you need? You need any, any yeah, I'll, I'll run it. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. I told her she's got questions, she needs to ask me, or needs to use a bathroom, or we'll, we'll shut it down and. Thank you. We do all that, so. Um, oh, I'm on the wrong phone.